Hi, and welcome to our video. For the next few minutes, we're going to take you on a journey through time. Sounds pretty cool, huh? Well, we're going to take you way, way back. No, not that far back. We're just going to rewind a few thousand years to the Mayan civilization. The Maya are widely considered the world's first chocolatiers. Just don't tell the Aztecs. Back then, cacao beans were used as currency before someone had the genius idea to take a bite. Kind of like a kid swallowing a penny, but tastier and safer. Fast forward to today. In the U.S. alone, we consume nearly 2.8 billion pounds of chocolate every year. That's 11 pounds per person. Pretty ironic since we can't actually grow cacao trees in the contiguous United States. Yet, we're the number one producer of the sweet stuff. So where do we get the cacao? The majority of the world's cacao is grown and harvested in Africa, specifically West Africa. But anywhere along the equator will do. The beans are then shipped around the world and manufactured using other ingredients such as sugar and milk and made into coverture or finished chocolate blocks or wafers. And that's where we take over. More on that in a minute. So what about us? When did Bark Eater Chocolates start? From the ashes of economic downfall rose Bark Eater Chocolates, full of flavor, full of life, full of love, and all in the heart of the flavor on decks. When we started Bark Eater Chocolates, we focused on making handcrafted truffles in Cafe Sarah on Main Street during the off hours. You could find us at farmer's markets, craft fairs, fundraisers, and online. Back then, you didn't have a whole lot of choices when it came to getting your hands on delicious, all-natural chocolate at a decent price. We wanted to make the Adirondacks a tastier place. As Bark Eater Chocolates grew in popularity through social media and word of mouth, so did our product line. Then in 2013, we purchased a haunted building. To keep up with our growing product line and customer base, the Bark Eater family grew bigger and went from one chocolatier to a small team of dedicated chocolate-loving people. Here at Bark Eater, we not only strive for perfection, we strive for delection. Let's get back to the chocolate making, shall we? Chocolate is finicky. In order to make it super delicious, we have to temper it, which means we raise the temperature up and we slowly bring it back down to between 85 and 89 degrees, and then work quickly before the chocolate sets. Then it's off to the cooling closet where the chocolate takes its time to chill. From there, it's packaged and shipped to our retailers, online and corporate customers, or put in our own store. If chocolate is not properly tempered, cooled, or stored, it blooms. And trust me, it's not that pretty. Lucky for you, that white stuff is just the cocoa butter separating and floating to the top of our chocolate. Okay to eat, just not to look at. So where does it go? Into our oopsie bin and sold at a reduced rate. If you want to learn a little more about chocolate, get your hands a little dirty, you can book a session, a chocolate making session and a tour, and you might even meet our ghost.